Welcome to the Wheel Scene YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk to you about the USD Sway. Not this particular USD Sway because the Chris Farmer is pretty much out of stock in most sizes and skate shops, but there's a bunch of new sways coming this year. The first one has already been announced, the Carlos Bernal Sway, which is pretty much identical to this in terms of features, just obviously a different colorway. There's also going to be the USD Sway Team Skate, which Mikhail Vietzman has been skating. And there's apparently meant to be a pro skate for Mikhail Vietzman dropping later in the year. So I thought I would give you guys my experiences of this skate so you can make an informed decision about purchasing any of those forthcoming skates. I've been riding this USD Sway Chris Farmer since November, so over six months, possibly over seven months, and we've had some good times. And we've had some not so good times. Basically, me and this skate have been through a lot. I have put it through every test known to man. I am a slightly overweight 40 year old man, so if they can handle the punishment I dish out to them, I'm pretty sure they can handle the punishment you dish out. I initially was not a fan of the Sway model. When it was first introduced, I thought it was cheap and nasty. It had a horrible liner and frames and wheels. My friend actually had a pair of them and snapped the shell. It cracked not long after he got it. He sent it back to the shop who kindly replaced it. And within a month or two, he cracked it again. And I was like, nope, not touching that skate. But then members of the USD Pro team started riding them. Montre Livingston was skating them, so was Chris Farmer. And part of me was thinking, wow, they must have improved it and maybe the shell's stronger. But then the cynical side of me was thinking, are they only skating that model because it's an easier pro skate because less people want it? But now more and more riders are actually using this skate. As I mentioned, Mikhail Vietzman's riding it, Carlos Bernal is riding it. It's rapidly becoming one of the most popular models in USD's range and I can completely understand why. But... I avoided this skate like the plague until the Chris Farmer 2 came out. Montre Livingston had pro skates before on it. I wasn't too keen on the colorways. Chris Farmer had a gray one, but again, the sole plate was a bit bulky and Fisher Price looking, so I just, I wasn't too keen. This colorway came out. I liked the new and improved sole plate. It came with a nice liner. It came with, I think it's the Fat Boy liner, which is a really good liner from my fit if you're at the bottom end of the shell size and it's really nice and padded. I've skated it before in the Nick Lomax Aeon. Basically, this skate went from being a really nasty, cheap budget skate to something that is a competitor with some of the best basic models on the market, such as the M12 from Rosie's, the Colt from Razors and the 909 from them skates. Basically, all they had to do was make it with a stronger material, shove in a decent liner, put on some good frames, and you've got a skate that can handle anything from beginners up to experts. Even when I got these, I wasn't that keen originally. My friend had a pair and I saw the way that the cuff forward flexed and I just wasn't into it at all. But I tried them on in the skate park and was just instantly shocked by how much I enjoyed them. I was previously on the Them 909, the medium, and I'm a size 10 UK shoe. I had them with these intuition liners and the fit was as close to perfect as it could possibly be. I, it was it was so tight that the performance was exceptional but I found that the toe box was a little bit tight and sometimes I would stub my toe or get cramps in my toe but usually I would just kick my heel into the skate and it would be better and I'd be good to go. With these, put them on, they they feel like they've got the kind of same length and width as a them 909, a medium 909 but a more generous toe box. I was also loving the fact that this sole plate is more generous and not as curved off at the back and just locking on felt a lot more controlled and comfortable and I just felt a lot more confident when I was skating in them. Even so, I bought a pair to review. I didn't buy them from a shop because I had that little confidence on it. A friend was selling a pair second hand and I got them off him because I was just expecting to skate these for a month and go back to my them 909s. After a month of skating these, they rapidly became my favourite skate and 
there's very few alternatives on the market right now that I would actually say I prefer to this. My initial concerns with the forward flex, yes, it does forward flex a lot, but not as much when you're using intuition liners and it wasn't really that much of an issue. I noticed it, but not that much. The thing I like about this skate is it's simple. It's not fancy or pretentious or has loads of little bits or is like bright and glowing. It's just basic and does the job. It's functional, which is all I want. I also like the look down effect because, because it's nice and wide. I've got quite big feet. And some models just look like absolute boats, like the Majestic 12 just looks really thin and long when you skate things like that. But with this, because it's nice and wide, it doesn't. It gives the illusion of being shorter, which I really enjoy. It's really light and responsive, and I don't get any pressure points on it at all, which having a flat foot, having a wide foot is quite rare with a lot of models that are currently available on the aggressive market. I also like that I can slightly size down in it. So this is the 9 to 9.5 UK. I am on the upper end of a size 10 UK, slightly over in most trainers and shoes essentially. And with these, I fit into it no problem at all. As I mentioned before, this skate stock comes with some really good options and features, but I initially swapped some stuff out. I put in an Intuition V2 liner just because the Fat Boy liner is great if you're at the bottom end of a shell size, but if you're at the top end and trying to save space, having a bulky liner isn't really the one. I also took out the stock heel pad that comes with this because it's about that thick, which is insane. I'm just using the standard Intuition. As I mentioned previously, another thing I swapped out was the frames. I put on the Entente Derridari frames just because they're my favorite flat frames on the market right now. I absolutely love them, the way they slide, the way they lock. There's no break-in time. They are quite expensive, but they do last a while. I've been riding on taunts for two years, maybe three years. I can't remember where I initially got them, but this is only my second set. So yeah, I would say they're hard wearing and they do the job and they're really good if you want to try flat, but you're a little bit anxious about it or you don't really trust yourself not to get wheel bite. These are the ones to break you in. They are great for beginners, intermediates, experts. I don't know where I fall on that scale between, between beginner and intermediate maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you may have noticed that it doesn't come with the original buckle. That is because I broke it within the first month or something of having it. I also put in some replacement buckles. I broke them as well. I don't know if there's just not enough buckle protection or I'm a terrible skater that misses grinds too much. Probably somewhere in between the two. But I'm currently using the Kikoa straps, which are a strap company based out of South America. They come from a skate shop by the same name. I've been riding these for about a month with no issues. They've not ripped, they, they pull the skate really tight, which I like. So yeah, gonna stick with those for a while. Another couple of things I don't like with the skate are kind of nitpicky and purely aesthetic. So I'm not really a fan of the holes that you get on either side of the skate. I just think they're completely unnecessary. And when I mentioned that in a previous review, someone said, well, that's where all the hot air gets out. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but right next to those two really small vents is a huge vent where the lacing system is. So I'm pretty sure all the hot air is coming out of there and not there. But like I said, that's purely an aesthetic thing. Doesn't really change any of the functionality. Another thing I'm not really that keen on is the 45 degree strap. I don't really feel like it offers much. I don't feel like it locks in the heel that much. It rattles a little bit. I just also find it quite annoying having to lace up the skates, then put the 45 degree strap on, then put the buckle on. I would rather just not have to do that at all. I did try taking it off, but I didn't like the way it looked because first off, it made the skate look skinnier, which in turn made it look longer and not as appealing. And also you can see the holes that are there. So it looks like there's something missing from the skate. The holes give the impression that something should be there that's not. And again, that just bugged me. And the last thing that I don't like about this skate, and this is ultra petty, but stick with me. The sole plate is fixed on at six points. So it's got six screws. On the M12 and on the Them 909, it's fixed on at eight points, which I just feels better and is more secure. Now, I know that sounds a bit pathetic, but I've actually had a couple of experiences where I've been skating around 
and I found that the skate was rattling a little bit. And then when I investigated, it turned out that the two screws on each side here had come out and were just rattling about. Thankfully, the Entente Derridari kept the screws in so I didn't lose them. But yeah, after some Loctite, it solved the problem. But I just feel like if it was mounted with four screws here, the same way it's mounted with four screws here, that wouldn't be an issue. But like I said, that's quite a small issue. We're halfway through the video, so I just want to give a giant shout out to my Patreon supporters. They are listed on the screen now. If you want to join the Wheel Scene Patreon, you can do so for as little as £3 a month. There's a bunch of videos on there and it's the best way to support this channel. Since we're halfway through the video and I've bored you long enough with all my talking, here's some skating clips that I've got this year on these skates so far. And we're back. So, why am I talking about this skate now? Basically, because of all the new models that are coming out, I do think it is worthwhile and it's basically an opportunity to give you guys the chance to make an informed decision on purchasing these. If you buy the Carlos Bernal model, it's pretty much identical to this, but just in different colors. I think it's got the same issue with the forward flex on the boot, but I'm not entirely sure. There's been no mention of it by USD that that's been addressed on that model. And it also comes with the 45 degree strap. But on the upcoming USD Sway team skate, the 45 degree strap has been swapped out for a loop. So you can just put your laces through it instead. So no more rattling bonus and you won't have holes in the side of the skate where the attachment's meant to be. Great. He also says that they've addressed the forward flex issue. I think by the sounds of things they've filled in the plastic here that allows it to move forward that much so hopefully that will no longer be an issue and I know for a fact that they have updated the buckle. Umberto de Tria who designed the entire Icon range he has made a new slimmer buckle which means it's got less surface area here and less likely to catch. And it also has an internal mechanism that stops it popping open or lifting up if you hit it. So you've got less chance of hitting the buckle in the first place. And even if you do hit the buckle, it's less likely to break. So useless idiots like me who miss grinds about 500 times a session, hopefully are less likely to break their skates. <laughs> As I mentioned, I've been skating this for over half a year now. I have thrown this thing at everything possible. Street, gaps, stairs, handrails, rough ledges, terrible Scottish terrain, and they have withstood the abuse. I was genuinely thinking I was going straight back to my them 909s after this. I do still love the 909 and probably will skate it again at some point in the future. But for now, I am absolutely loving these skates. I'm probably going to buy the team edition when it comes out just because I want to see what the new forward flex situation is like and what the new buckle is like. But yeah, if you're on the fence about getting the USD Sway, I would strongly recommend it. The new Carlos Bernal model is a little bit expensive. It's close to 300 euros, but these ones were less than 200 when they came out. So I'm hoping the team edition will be less than 200 when it comes out. I thoroughly recommend this skate. I think it's up there with the M12, the Cult, 
the Aeon, the 909. So if you're looking for a simple, functional skate with a great sole plate that can handle some abuse, I would recommend this.